Okay, maybe I'm late to the party with this one, but I was cruising the internet the other day when something made me double take. Someone casually mentioned Microsoft Edit. My first instinct was they must mean VS Code, but the context was wrong because they were talking about the command line. And I thought, no, they got rid of that ages ago, didn't they? Curious, I typed edit into my command prompt and hit enter. Hold on, is this? To explain the reaction to the more youthful among you, when I was a kid, our first computer ran Windows 3.1. Actually, upgraded to 3.11 for work groups. In those days, Windows wasn't so much an operating system as an application that ran on top of the real operating system, DOS. Your computer booted into DOS, and you could start Windows by typing win at the command prompt. You could also close Windows entirely and return to the underlying DOS. This is something you'd find yourself doing fairly often. Computers were rather limited in those days, and running Windows consumed a lot of resources. So applications that needed to squeeze maximum performance out of your PC were written to run directly on DOS. If you wanted to run Doom, and you did want to run Doom, you would find yourself becoming quite familiar with the old DOS prompt. Because you were doing this with Windows closed, you had to, by necessity, edit configuration files at the command prompt. And to do that, you used MS-DOS Editor. You would launch this by typing edit, and it looked like this. Does this look familiar? I mean, these definitely share some DNA, right? Has this just been here all along and I forgot? No. No, these are actually not the same at all. This is the MS-DOS Editor, first released in 1991. And this is Microsoft Edit, first released in 2025. The modern version has been deliberately styled to look like the old MS-DOS editor as a bit of an homage, but these are completely different pieces of software. Microsoft Edit looks a bit retro, but it has some modern touches like support for a bazillion encoding standards. And while you can use the Alt key to access menus like it's 1991, you can also just use the mouse. The question is, why? Why create a command line text editor for Windows? I've thought of a few scenarios where this is going to be handy, but they're actually not the first couple that sprung to mind. The first thing I thought of, having been conditioned by Vim on Linux, is that, oh, this will be useful when I'm accessing a Windows server in the core or no GUI install. Except it's not, because Windows without a GUI doesn't really exist, it's just more like a minimized GUI. The way I see it, Linux is a command line operating system, and someone duct taped a graphical interface on top. Windows Server Core is the opposite. It's a graphical operating system, and somebody's just ripped bits off it. But not all the bits. For example, it still has Notepad, so it doesn't actually need a command line text editor. My next thought was Remote PowerShell. Enter a remote session, and now I can edit files in place without logging onto a desktop session. Except edit doesn't actually work in a remote PowerShell session. So what's it for? Here are four ideas. The first one is perhaps a little bit niche, but if you're in that niche, it's awesome. This YouTube thing isn't my job. I work at a company that provides, amongst various business and IT consultancy offerings, managed IT services. Those of us in the MSP space will be quite familiar with using remote monitoring and management software, RMM for short, to control lots of devices across lots of locations. A feature that's very common among them is the ability to fire up a remote command prompt in a web browser access the system without logging onto it directly. We currently use Ninja One, but many RMM tools have this feature. It saves a bunch of time, and if there's someone already using the machine, you can work on it in the background without disturbing them. What you can't easily do is edit text files or read logs this way. Microsoft Edit works fine in this browser-based command prompt, so I can edit away properly, almost like it was Linux. Speaking of Linux, Scenario 2 is for everyone else people who don't use an RMM tool, but would like to edit text files on remote machines without actually logging onto a console or desktop session. Remember how I said remote PowerShell doesn't work? It was kind of disappointing because I envisaged a Linux-like experience where you just SSH in and open Vim. Then I remembered I can do that. A modern Windows server has an SSH server built in. It's switched off by default, but you can just turn it on and SSH into Windows these days. If you have mixed Windows and Linux estates, this can be useful anyway to reduce the number of different tools you need to manage them. As it turns out, 
Microsoft Edit works just fine over SSH. If you're used to SSHing in and opening Vim on Linux, you can SSH in and open Edit on Windows. Scenario 3. Microsoft Edit is for people who miss Notepad. I know Notepad still exists, but no it doesn't. Not the real Notepad. Notepad was a basic text editor. No frills, no messing, just text. Modern Notepad is not. Don't get me wrong, I do approve of some of the changes. I like that it has tabs. I like that it remembers whatever was in the current session if I close it without saving the file. I don't care for the new font formatting features. I don't really want it checking my spelling. I don't understand why it wants to sign into my Microsoft account. I absolutely do not need freaking Copilot in a bare bones text editor and I read they're going to add tables to it next. I am not using Notepad to write an essay. That's what Microsoft Word is for. Notepad is to quickly edit a config file or open a log. I don't want Copilot trying to reinterpret information from a diagnostic log or spell correct a config file when, yes, I know it's spelt wrong. It's American English. We speak British English, aka English English, aka English. The config needs to be spelt American because the software was written by an American. And as much as I'd like our friends across the pond to learn to spell things the correct way, if I add a U to the word color, it's just not going to work. It may not look it, but Microsoft Edit is actually more like Notepad than Notepad is these days. It's a simple, straightforward text editor, and it works. Last scenario, and no, I'm not even going to apologize for this. The new Microsoft Edit is written in Rust. It's open source, and yes, it's available on Linux. You may think that Linux doesn't need yet another text editor, but hold that thought. There is a somewhat infamous argument on the internet, Vim versus Emacs. Honestly, I haven't seen it in ages, and I suspect it's limited to a handful of aging neckbeards these days. But it's an argument that has transcended rational meaning. I'm not saying you should do this, but if you should ever stumble across a Vim versus Emacs flame war in the future, you could let them know that Microsoft Edit is your favorite editor, drop a screenshot of you running it on Arch, by the way, and just watch them all lose their collective minds. I'm not saying you should, I'm just saying the option exists. What you should do, of course, is watch this video, because this one is basically over. I'll pop a link to Microsoft Edit in the video description, although if you're running the latest version of Windows 11 or server, it'll be installed already. See you next time.